Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week and a look forward at what might happen in the next week. And always good stuff right in the middle. Well, this week, it was a week for the Fed watchers, actually, actually watchers of all central banks, uh, and we got some interesting things happening here. Um, well, the Fed, everybody was waiting for their action, or should we call it inaction, as overall, we got a no change uh, in anything, and if anything, there was a commentary that seemed a little bit dovish and the stock market got lifted as it seems to always do uh, on the Fed day and of course everybody was waiting then for the Bank of Japan on Thursday Bank of Japan well they shook things up or maybe it was Kuroda that was kind of shook up uh, as everyone expected uh, that you know since their bazooka had already failed that they would bring a cannon to the market and essentially they brought nothing and you got to think, Bank of Japan, I think they're in a total, a total state of confusion. They have no clue what to do after all of these years and nothing apparently working. Um, they are back in recession. And, you know, here in the United States, uh, 15 years of going at it. And our growth rate here at uh, about uh, five-tenths of a percent now estimated for the quarter. How's that? Well, they got a celebration in the Eurozone because they expect their growth rate to tick up from five-tenths of a percent for the quarter to six-tenths of a percent for the quarter. So everybody's happy about that. None of them know what to do. And basically, we believe the patients are running the asylum. Well, we've got plenty of action going on in the markets with um, apparently a commodity bull market going on with lots of stuff moving. Uh, the, you know, although early week was really quiet, when this uh, news about the Bank of Japan came out, well, the yen absolutely screamed, of course, uh, because if they're not going to, at the moment, create any more yen, because they don't know what to do, uh, then uh, the yen screamed, the dollar collapsed, gold got bought, oil was really strong, uh, and uh, we had lots of stuff going on in the commodities. But come Thursday, Apple reported its earnings and they were a big disaster and that really helped the market move to the downside. <clears throat> and then Carl Icahn, he helped it a lot too because he came out and said he's out of his Apple stock and Apple then really started to move to the downside again as well they figured if he's out maybe everybody else should get out and that helped the move market move down also our US stock market down uh, at one point about two percent finishes down about one and three quarter percent for the week so we'll call that modest on the downside but all the action uh, that we saw uh, in the markets uh, was a lot more than that little bit on the downside. The dollar, well, that was really worth looking at as it gets hammered as the euro and the yen both explode to the upside. Uh, that's not helpful uh, for those countries, Japan and uh, the eurozone. Both would prefer to uh, take their deflation and send it over to us, but you can't do that when uh, your currency then gets strong, when you're essentially run out of bullets. That's what's happened. Uh, when uh, the dollar collapses of course money flies out of things that are denominated in dollars and of course that's why our stocks were weak bond market's been extraordinarily weak and we think that's in the middle of a big downside move and uh, it barely could get an uptick this week a uh, couple of small updates while the stock market was falling to the downside so if you look at relative strength and the inverse correlation the bonds not doing well and that really speaks to the fact that they have some trouble and uh, we'll show you at the end of the show 
that uh, we think the bond market is going to be moving down again as the stock market tries to get its footing over this next week or two. Gold absolutely uh, flew. Talk about getting out of dollar-denominated uh, things. Um, when the dollar goes down, it takes more dollars to buy gold. So, yep, gold goes to the upside. In fact, Friday, $30 move, just extraordinary. We were looking for one more little dip to the downside before it had its next big move up. And, uh, well, forget about that that this was really a breakout and we'll look at that also in the short term of view uh, recovery high test that $1,300 number for gold oil relentless march to the upside our upside target for the year was 45 here it gets up over the $46 number closing right around that and uh, the hope is of course that all of the um, worst is behind it as far as the supply glut goes and that the pretty soon with the rig counts down so low uh, that that supply will be diminished <clears throat> We don't like that argument. We actually think that Iran is going to pour a lot of oil on the market. There's a glut out there in gas. Uh, there's tons of gas out there. So uh, the, the stuff that makes for big bulls in the oil market, big bull market, is not there. And we don't think oil is going to run a whole lot further in here. Uh, and this was just a nice run. And I think the shorts are uh, getting squeezed a bit here. And we think it's going to end in there pretty soon. Let's take a look uh, now as we look at our 60-minute chart of the S&P 500. And uh, just take a quick look at what happened during the week. And if you look in here, you will see that what we always do is put up this chart with our notes in there of what happens during the week and what moves the markets. We always want to know what the influences are for the market. And I will show you that right here. If you look at, you know, that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that market was just moving really sideways in here. Everything we looked at uh, were for Monday, uh, world markets slightly lower, world markets remain quiet, uh, foreign markets were quiet. You can see that was really what was going on in there uh, and as everybody was waiting for these central banks. Uh, here you could see China intervention came in to support the yuan on Monday and you got a pop and uh, oil rallied again but then oil started to sell off overnight and that brought the market down but then during the day uh, you got that bounce again in there. Uh, really not a lot went at all, on, at all on Tuesday and that was even with a surge in oil of about 3%, but you could see during the trading session it just moved sideways <clears throat> in there. The news comes out about the Apple miss on Wednesday afternoon. And the market actually held up uh, pretty well in there. You could see oil inventories come out over here. That sends the market down. FOMC news comes out over here. They were somewhat dovish, and that sends the market up. Then overnight, the Bank of Japan does nothing there, and you could see the big collapse. But oil pushes the market back up. How do you like that for a zigzag chop going on? The news comes out over here that Carl Icahn is out of Apple and Apple starts to collapse. You could see going on right there. And then you get this very pretty looking triangular shape right over here overnight as uh, no more stimulus from Bank of Japan. Who knows what the Fed is doing? And uh, the yen collapse, the, the dollar collapses against the euro and the yen right over here. Uh, and uh, that sends our markets to the downside really sharply. They have a comeback on Friday afternoon. But overall, you could see that there was some good selling waves going on in the market this week. And uh, we kind of think that, um, I'll show you at the end of the show, but they're uh, probably seeing the worst of that on the downside for now. Maybe just a little bit more, and uh, we'll show you where we think that's going to come from. Calendar for the week. Well, here it comes, and you'll see in here uh, when we look at this that um, the earnings reports are starting to dwindle finally. Uh, and uh, you can see the uh, stuff that goes on pre-opening on this top over here. The stuff that comes on after the close is right in this line over here. So there's still a, a few decent big ones that people watch to come in here. You Humana is one that we always uh, trade, have a position on. Gold, uh, this one in here, Rand Gold, is the one of the best movers, the best traders in the gold markets right there pre-opening uh, on Wednesday. Uh, and then uh, everybody will be watching these Tesla numbers and what their commentary is there after the close 
on Wednesday. So those are some of the bigger ones in there. <clears throat> as far as big uh, news events goes, uh, everything in there is kind of not market moving event until the employment numbers over here, which come out. That's the big event for the week on Friday. So uh, you will uh, want to keep your eyes on that one Friday morning. And uh, that is our calendar for the week. That's it for the opening segment. And uh, we'll be right back with the best and the worst for the week. <laughs> For the best of the week, well, earnings were not a big help, uh, with earnings being so poor, actually, for the quarter, well, that's going to show up a lot in the worst of the week. Uh, what did show up is this ongoing commodity bull market, which is maybe just getting its legs, and uh, we've had some just giant moves over these weeks. Uh, but before we talk about the commodity bull market, uh, one stock, the biggest mover that we had in our whole universe was a St. Jude Medical, STJ, Abbott, Labor Abbott Laboratories, um, essentially gulps that one up, and uh, that's a big buyout. We had that in a positive uh, pattern in here, uh, in a rally pattern, and man, they just uh, took that uh, up a huge amount, 27% on the week, big gain. Let's take a look at what that chart looks like right here and you could see this big big up week <clears throat> uh, we you see we had this dotted line in here saying we were in a rising cycle you could see the channel right over there and uh, it just explodes on the upside take a look here as we look at the daily chart and you'll note in here that well the positive momentum signal right there when the slim ribbon turned positive then the breakout above the 89 day moving average and the stock moves sharply to the upside so uh, we will say goodbye to St. Jude Medical out of our universe of maybe 329 stocks right now as it uh, uh, things do disappear <clears throat> uh, in the materials sector which had some uh, big gains again cliffs uh, up 29 percent uh, those have been very volatile stocks in there uh, their um, earnings swung to a profit and that was a big surprise so a big gain in there uh, FCX we'll take a look at that one up 18 percent on the week and uh, big gains uh, in a lot of these as we've seen uh, like gold absolutely surge this week right and uh, copper's been in great shape and silver just giant moves so uh, that has helped take a look here at this pattern and note that it gets just above the top of that resistance zone interesting how those resistance zones have worked as you can see this one over here at the 34 week moving average this one here well it didn't quite make the 34 week moving average and here it breaks out well above it and then gets above that zone so it shows you how much stronger this is when we take a closer look <clears throat> At FCX you can see uh, how we have these cycles drawn in here that dotted cycle is the copper cycle and this black cycle is the FCX cycle so they're uh, nicely in alignment uh, FCX a copper and gold stock so we're gonna look for a topping in here and a pullback in FCX these moves have been giant when you go from three dollars and fifty cents all the way up to 14 like four fold moves so yeah the big moves in there and uh, you know there's a lot of leverage that goes on uh, when these prices start to get higher in the metals how much it affects profitability in these stocks so big gains in there <clears throat> also when we look at the golds you've had monstrous gains uh, ABX up 14 uh, percent gold corp up 13 percent that's GG let's take a look at that one in GG and you will see uh, what these patterns look like and this uh, looks a lot like that pattern we just showed you in FCX and in copper and there you could see in here what we're looking for so big gains close right on its highs for the week uh, in there about 13 14 percent on the week this is the pattern that we're looking for in there and that is some little pullbacks right in here for maybe a couple of weeks or so and then storming to the upside again gold really better pattern 
than, uh, uh, than this is that uh, it already looks like it made its low as silver did. So I think gold will get a little bit of a pullback, and we'll talk about that in the short-term view. And then after that, I think up again. You could see these patterns as they look like that also. Hecla up 11% in the silver category. Uh, look at PAAS, uh, Pan America. Uh, just absolutely flew uh, this uh, one of the stocks of my best of the year uh, that I expected to have big up moves and you can see right there as it absolutely flies we know when I said best of the year <clears throat> I had no idea that it was going to go from a low of five all the way up here to 16 15 and a half craziness huh anyway we'll look for some correction in here also but we don't think it's going to be very long and very far be sweet to be able to buy this stock under 13 and a half 14 dollars at that 23 percent you see that and then we think it'll be up again so just powerful moves in there newmont which had giant moves only up about six percent on the week uh, in the category of oil energy man oil was strong wasn't it uh, we'll show that also in our short-term view as we expected a pullback which did not happen uh, and we'll take a look here at the biggest gainer in the energy uh, sector of the stuff that we look at which is whiting petroleum WLL and this one uh, continuing to move up but uh, gets up into this area of its 17% uh, gain on the week, by the way, right up into this 34-week yeah, moving average. This should be a place that it turns over <clears throat> and gets the, uh, some correction. We actually do think that we're going to have a significant correction in oil uh, down into June, July. So you could see how this essentially looks. And we think we're going to get something like that in uh, these oil stocks, but whiting up huge. Uh, APC uh, up uh, about 7% to resistance. Uh, National Oil Well, NOV, that's up about 5%. Uh, and uh, that is building a major base in their NOV. So I think that uh, when you get some uh, uh, pullback in there, that's going to be one of the stocks really to buy. Uh, other stocks uh, on the upside that were really strong, uh, 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 P, which is Pandora, up 9%. This is a bad pattern in there. It's up to the 89-day resistance. And the candlestick in there for today for the big gain uh, on its earnings, uh, you know, it had a bigger loss than expected, but they had stronger ad sales. So I think uh, that brought you know, a lot of buyers in, but it couldn't hold. And uh, so it gave up a lot of that ground. I think it's going back to 850, to tell you the truth. Uh, BSX, uh, Boston Scientific, well, that would go up with St. Jude Medical. That's up 10%, and uh, we actually think the stock is in great shape. Uh, we'll get a dip in there. Our buy area is around 21 in BSX, Boston Scientific. CNX, Console Energy, big 10% gain also. Uh, we think that one is topping. And we're going to be looking for that to be rolling over soon. And you have to mention Amazon, which ends up 5% for the week on the upside. It blasts through the resistance that we were looking for and sets up a better pattern than it had. It's a huge quarter. We think it has still a few more weeks uh, on the upside before it then rolls over into a correction. Well, you know, I'm going to show you in the short-term view also that I think we're going to get, you know, a couple weeks of rally again in the market, maybe a little less, and that uh, probably holds Amazon to the upside, and then we're going to be looking for a topping in there. Uh, you know, Amazon, it's been, you know, trading like in the five and six hundreds when they made no money, and now that they're making money, right, and uh, they're, uh, you can start to figure out real PEs. So, I mean, if you project out what their PE is for the year based on the fact that they had a huge quarter, uh, you're still going to have a PE of like 300 or more. So, it's an extraordinarily high price stock, and you have to start then looking at some real numbers. So, that's a little bit crazy. All right, so that's it for the best of the week, and we'll be right back with the worst. For the worst of the week, well, in a quarter where earnings are coming in down about an average of 8%, big number, um, the bad chart patterns are really telling the story as some of the stocks that were set up to go down really got hammered. Uh, we'll take a look at Twitter. Twitter's not one that I'm real proud of here because 
it was listed in my best 12 for the year. I expected that we would see either them significantly change the model, which would get a lot of buying coming in, or that with the, the massive, you know, almost 400 million users, that there would be somebody that would come in and grab that company up. Well, neither of those happened, and this was a giant miss in earnings. They guided lower analysts all over it on the downside, uh, and this pattern, not pretty. Take a look in here, and you can see it followed the pattern. I mean, even though I have it listed as one of my best stocks for the year, which I did, well, right over here at the beginning of the year, um, it still uh, has put on a negative pattern. And this was not a surprise to us based on what we saw here. This is the time period out here in June, July that we think would be the best potential period for it based on these patterns. So take a look right over here and you will see what we're looking at here and that is that this uh, pattern in here has now turned negative as or as it tests this low over here. We expect another, we'll call it four to six weeks of struggle over here before it eventually does make a bottom. It should go uh, pretty well below the $14 number uh, before this bottom is in place. So not a good pattern there at all. Interestingly, when you look at the shorter term uh, patterns in here, we'll go out a little further and you could see this right in here, that uh, there's about a few more days potential in here and then likely to try to get some kind of a bounce. Uh, the support zone that was holding it, well, it gets underneath that support zone right now. So um, we're looking to look for a little bounce for a couple of weeks, but then what we think after that is that it heads under 14 again. Uh, something like this is what we're really looking for. So overall, Twitter, <clears throat> not a good pattern at all. Uh, next one we're going to talk about, look at, is Xerox. You know, Xerox, boy, I've been around a long time. When I first got in the CBOE floor, that was one of the flyers back in 1974. Some of you may be old enough to remember the Nifty 50. Well, this was one of them with Polaroid and a whole bunch of other high flyers that traded for unbelievable values. I think Amazon. Um, this uh, stock right in here, Xerox, uh, gets a big downside hit. Uh, take a look at the pattern in here, and you will see this amazing gap that happened on Monday. Down 12% on the week, uh, and here is that chart. They have um, uh, their earnings, uh, how about this, uh, got crushed, fell by 85%, just a big, big drop. This actually, the gap happened on Monday, so that's why you see it on the weekly chart. And you could see as it turns down that this pattern is suggestive of a decline of another, well, four or five weeks. So uh, maybe that's in line what, we're, what probably will happen in the stock market in some kind of a correction for, well, four or five weeks. Uh, we'll take a look here uh, at some other ones in here that uh, really do not look very good. Uh, next one we're going to look at is Gilead, G-I-L-D. And you're going to see a theme in here of stocks that we thought were about to roll over. Look at this one in here as it gets right to the top of that resistance zone and then just absolutely collapses. They uh, had a, a miss in earnings on that huge gap, and analysts are all over this one also on the downside. Uh, take a look at the shorter-term daily chart in here, and uh, you will see that... Uh, the pattern was suggestive of a decline right in here, and we actually think that this decline is going to hold it for a little bit in here, and then as it plunged underneath the support and the 89-day moving average, get a little bit of a bounce and uh, not really be in good shape at all. You could see this pattern uh, talk looks like it points to going down into June or July when you look at that. So overall, bad pattern in Gilead, and we have believed that Every, everything in the medical area <coughs> and HMOs were going to uh, struggle a lot uh, because of the um, situation with the political backdrop and uh, that Hillary Clinton is all over these things. So I uh, have to put up Apple, AAPL. This has been a sad one. And uh, as we talked about, a big market mover. Um, the pattern in here, another one gets right up to the resistance zone there. Uh, the prospects in here are really uh, dwindling. And uh, Carl Icahn, of course, out of this stock really sends it lower. Earnings, big miss. Uh, and analysts all over it with downgrades. Now, you see this low right over here? 
you can see that it just got below that right there. That is very significant. When you look at look at this rise right over here and this rise over here you can see those rises right in here and right in here and then when they roll over for this whole period in here and this whole period in here that's this rise here and this whole period in here a decline all the way out into July August this is a dreadful pattern right there there is a support right over here at about 85 bucks we think it's going there and uh, so it's a really ugly pattern in there and we think really bad shape. Uh, next one we'll look at FSLR for solar. <clears throat> Down 10% on the week on a big miss and there's that cycle support broken also. So we're looking for a decline into June, July. You know, all of this stuff is pointing to the stock market struggling into June, July. How do you like that one? One more stock that we'll look at in this category, CMG, uh, Chipotle, that's down 7% on the week. And now note the pattern in here. So you have these bigger patterns and smaller patterns, right? So you could see the rally and the sell-off right here, the rally and the sell-off right in here. That's this right here. You see how they match right there? That's how the cycles help you with the timing. And then there are smaller moves within there. These two smaller moves make it, and you can see the smaller move right here. There's a bottoming right there. So we're expecting Chipotle to get a bounce. Sometime in the next week or so, then you get a rally, which could be quite sharp in a stock like this, and then rolling over again into the end of July. So there's another one of those that points to July is a period of a sharp decline and a weaker market. And uh, that is uh, a lot of stocks that look that way. Also on the downside, Goodyear Tire loses 10%, uh, as that one uh, has a major top formed in there. Uh, we also have uh, <clears throat> Lionel Basil, LYB, that is down 10% also. Uh, and uh, this one looks like uh, it probably has support around the $82 number. We think it's gonna continue down to about right over there. And uh, United Airlines, uh, that has a support around $46 as uh, the rise in oil seems to be hurting it. And that has a little more on the downside also. So that's it for the worst of the week. And we're gonna be right back with our short-term view. <laughs> All right, before we get into our short-term view of the coming week, I want to remind you we have been running a special that now has only three days left to go. Uh, if you would like to see all of our work, that's all of our seven categories of videos, get our rankings and setups where we look at the 71 best traders in three different time frames, put out uh, setups uh, on a daily basis in those uh, different symbols for swing traders, option traders, and also all of our charts you can get for your TOS platform. Uh, all of that for the next 14 days, no cost, no credit card, nothing. All you have to do is send me an email and tell me that you'd like to get that 14-day trial, and I'll send you a link, and it's easy to sign up. And we want you just to see all of our work, and you can get a sense for what we do. Then maybe you'll love it, and you'll become a subscriber. All right, let's uh, look at our short-term view of the coming week. We do this every single week. We look at only the daily charts. We take an accountability of how we did in the last week. We're always hopeful to get in the area of 60 to 70% correct. We've done that a lot. This week, not. Uh, this week was about 50%. Uh, as uh, the things that went wrong were really about the... Um, the central banks and the actions that they took or that, that didn't take and how that moved the currency markets and we think that really affected uh, especially the gold market the euro market of course and like crude plain out simply we did not get that right we were looking for a dip and then another rally, uh, well, the dip was almost not perceptible, you'll see that. And then it got into another rally, went past uh, our expected high even for the year, and really no selling hit the market yet at all, though we do think 
that is coming in here and probably for an extended period of time but we're only looking now at the short-term view so we'll take a look here at these daily charts with our projections in there for the cycle patterns and uh, you will see in here that this one has got kind of a bigger cycle and a smaller cycle that <clears throat> We call this out of phase because uh, there's no particular important alignment in here. We look at the important bottoms and uh, you'll see that the numbers in here are lined up with, with important lows. Like this is an eight day average cycle right there. So you can see that low there on seven day, a low on eight days. We expected this week for this to come down like over here and then move up again. You can see this pattern right in here. But it didn't. It just got legs, didn't break underneath that 13-day moving average, and went up for four straight days. So we got this one completely wrong. Uh, and uh, we now have a new minor support in there. And we're in this period in here where there is risk. You see this right in here. Now, when both cycles line up together, right, like you can see right there, you tend to get some decent decline. Here they were lined up together right there. And you got, you know, in this big bull move, not exactly a what we would call a giant down move. That was from $40 down to about $37. That's still $3 on the downside. We expect every bit of three of two to three dollar move in here on the downside. So our first support in here uh, for this week comes in right over here. Uh, we'll call that uh, around 44 to 4460. That's just a little minor support right there. And then right over here is the bigger support right around 4230. So th those are really the, the two different areas we're looking for. We think the probability is high that we will get somewhere around, because this was short, so it'll probably be a little bit long. We're going to call it uh, the next five days really being under some pressure in here and having a correction. Again, those numbers are right around 44 and then at around 4230 we can't really tell which one it'll stop at and then after that if we do get that right we would expect some rally you could see that right over here and then some bigger pressure coming out over there we really do not believe that there is very much left on the upside here in the oil market at all next one we're going to look at is gold as we move over uh to these uh the left side of course is our weekly analysis and the right side is our daily now i don't show the weekly when we do this i'm just giving you a little peek in here because this big yellow area is something that we're going to talk about here on the daily chart <clears throat> And that big yellow area where we expected a, de a decline to come out into this area down under 1208 and then potentially down to 1190, well, that time really looks to us like it's passed. And now we get this breakout. You see this uh, big flag formation or pennant formation that was forming in there? All of these declining phases could not get it to break. I talked about that in the Wednesday Future Speak show, that it really looked to me like this was just so super strong, especially because of the silver action and copper action, that we just might not get that break. And you could see in here, we got the break out right over there. And this is really a strong pattern when we look at that. Now, it's had a big move, and we think the dollar is going to get a little bit of a bounce. So we're likely to get some bad backing and filling in here. This silver market looks like it's going to have a bit of a correction in there. So we're actually looking for it to get up into a resistance that exists uh, on the weekly chart between 1300 and 1308. It's just above this level out over here. And we think it'll stall in there and then start to roll over into some kind of sideways correction. We don't think that there's much of a downside coming in here and not a whole lot of buying opportunity. So the range that we're looking for is the high of about 1308, which is the resistance in there. Uh, and uh, I wish I put it in there for you to see. And then uh, the uh, down around the support area around 1274. So we're really only looking for that minor range in there. Probably try to get up a little more, fail in there, 1300 to 1308, pull back a little bit to the 
uh, 1274 number and then work its way up again there as we have the GDX rising, the gold rising, and uh, the silver having corrected and it rising. That does not allow for much downside in here at all. And I think that every downtick in the gold market is really a buy. Next one we're going to look at is the euro. Now we're going to only get about half credit on this one. We expected that the euro would pull back a little bit and then move up again. We thought it would be a small change on the week, setting up a big rally for the following week. Well, you could see what happened in here. You see this low right over here? That low came a couple days early for us. We said two, two days down into the support and then moving up. Well, the up move came. So I think I'm being a little harsh when I say we don't get credit for this one. It did really what we expected, other than the fact it did not dip enough into the support zone that we thought it would. So we missed it by a couple days, really, but the pattern really held up very, very strongly. We actually think for the next week, it's going to, <clears throat> we'll still see the dollar overall for the next week have a little bounce and really not be able to make much upside growth Round. Uh, so we think that we're going to get into some choppy area in here. You know, this moves with gold a lot. And you can see how this moved up when gold moved up uh, because it's inverse to the dollar. They're both inverse to the dollar. We expect it to get up to a resistance zone right up around here and a little higher. Right around 115.10 is a resistance zone. I see we have it on our weekly charts for you to look at right around 115.10. That's what we think it could make on the upside and then start to roll over. See this pattern right in here? That's kind of what we're looking for in here. Kind of get up to 115.10 and then roll over a little bit and then move up again out over here. That's pretty much the same pattern we just showed you in gold, which is both, as I said, inverse to the dollar. So that is a look at the euro currency. Bond market, what we thought was it would get a small advance as the, the S&P 500 corrected, which was pretty much spot on. There's the patterns in there. We're getting that small advance. Now, you note in here that we have minor resistant sell zone right up in there. The way the pattern looks is that maybe the stock market gets a little bit of a bounce, then the stock market starts to waffle. So that's the inverse I just drew in there. And then this starts to come over. We think this is a sell zone right over here and setting up for a big decline as these patterns roll over in a big way. So we're looking for uh, the bond market to just plain out. Uh, get sold very, very hard in coming weeks. Uh, we, we, we would expect that uh, 1305 uh, right in here uh, to about 1314 is the area could pop up into and then begin to roll over. And the bond market, the 30 year, that's 163.20 to um, uh, 164.05. 164.20 to 163.20 to 164.05. And this one is, uh, I don't know what number I said before, but uh, the number is a 29. I was reading that wrong. Uh, the, the, the number in there is uh, 20, what is that? 130.05, correct, to uh, 130.15. Uh, we'll call that as that resistance zone. 130.05 to 15, that's what we think is the sell zone. Bond market 163.20 to 164.05. We think that that's the sell zone in there, and we think that there is a big decline coming. Uh, in the bond market. If you didn't see futures speak, you can see that, of course, uh, if you, uh, you know, become a trial member and uh, you'll be able to see all those videos. And we do a much deeper analysis when we look at the weekly patterns. And we talked about the bond market being in a lot of trouble. And if you think about how poorly the bond market did these last couple of days, uh, at the end of the week with the stock market falling, it just shows you the uh, the, the strength in the bond market is just not there. So uh, odds are pretty good high it's going to be falling again. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. Now we said this week that it was uh, likely to roll over and to correct. Our downside uh, target was uh, uh, a little bit higher than where it got to. Uh, we talked about the stair step upward pattern last week and also in our future speak. Uh, and here's that pattern in the S&P 500. Note the uh, these cycle patterns in here is what we're following 
and note that the market actually is following those patterns in this stair step upward move and it remains in this stair step upward move now there's something important to look at in here i mentioned uh that uh in in the wednesday show that uh, the uh nasdaq was in a much weaker pattern and it was setting up some sense that we could be putting in a topping pattern in here so if you look at this you'll see that this only corrected like you know 20 something percent right there this did the same thing this got down to the 78.6 percent right over there on that 17th day so that shows you that it's likely that there's a rolling over going on and this pattern followed pretty much exactly as we expected we thought it would get down to the bottom of this support zone around 2062 it actually got down further about 2052 down to that 78.6 that is, we'll call that, the first sign that we're in a corrective process. Now, what we're looking for in here is maybe a day or two fooling around, testing that low. It could possibly do that. And then turning up again. Uh, we're going to call this uh, a relatively small up week net as we expect the rally to try to resume. Now, note the minor resistance right in there. That minor resistance uh, comes in at 2081 to 2088 on the S&P 500. The pattern that we're looking for right in there is this, you know, just fooling around in here for a day or two, then rally up into this right over here. That's this, you see that right in here? And if we're right about the market topping, it will struggle in this area. And then when this pattern takes a hold, it will roll over and have a, a lot more trouble that's the pattern that we're looking for so we're looking for a minor up week get up to 21 uh to 2081 uh to around 2088 that resistance and then roll over if it gets through that 2088 number and shows a lot of strength back up to this other highs you'll know that the topping isn't quite ready yet uh, and I, I, I sincerely doubt that's going to happen. I really expect it to uh, try to rally and roll over as uh, a lot of the uh, strength in the market, you can see, is disappearing. These earnings are not there to hold the market up. Uh, and uh, if the commodities um, markets and uh, the, the oil and materials and those that have been lifting the market in here, uh, if, if those aren't there to do it anymore and they're very overbought, then uh, only bounces in the beaten up stocks are left as a potential and uh, to hold the market up. And if you start to see that, you know, where the, uh, the, the rotation comes in where you get bounces in these beaten up stocks like Apple, uh, like Netflix, uh, and they don't go very far, it lifts the market a little bit and then it starts to roll over, you'll know that uh, we're in this topping process and the market is ready to move down. One more little tip off that the market is ready to move down. We talked about the VIX that I'm going to put up the weekly chart because I want you to see this, that it was about to start to rise. Uh, and right now it looks like <coughs> on the daily chart, it's in a place where it could chop around a little bit. But this weekly chart looks to us like it is in a perfect spot for this big rally in implied volatilities. Now I want you to see each of the time periods where there were two of these patterns that were pushing on the upside. So that's right over here, that's right over here, and right over here, and right over here. And each of those brought big upside pops in applied volatility. <coughs> you could see that right there, and of course right over here, and just starting right over here. So this is two years worth of it you're looking at right here. And we're in that phase where implied volatility is likely to jump. And that means that the stock market is likely to go into a corrective phase. Talked about the potential for uh, 80 to 100 point move on the downside in the S&P 500. Uh, and you'll see that if you look at, at Future Speak on Wednesday. Uh, so I encourage you, if you're not a member, to uh, take our trial and try that out. And uh, we think that the stock market is entering into a corrective period. And uh, just a matter of how this little top in here does form. That is it for uh, our Market Week show. We hope you have loved what we brought. Uh, we made it a little shorter show today, so uh, if you like it shorter without a lot of, not a lot of other stuff in the middle, 
then uh, let us know your opinion on that. Always uh, want to hear what you have to say. If you're one that likes it when we bring in a lot of interviews and a lot of other stuff and lengthen the show out uh, to like an hour and ten minutes, then uh, tell us you like that too. That's it for the week. Uh, we hope you have a great weekend. And we're always wishing you great trading. Well, I'm going to the city and I'm going to do a city show.